All right. Today we're going to be taking a look at proverbs or proverbs or proverbs uh, 31. We're going to take a look at chapter 31. And uh, so let's see if I can't get my first reading to read Proverbs 31, 1 through 9, please. The word of King Lam Lamuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lamuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princesses strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb, in the case of all such uh, appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Hallelujah. Okay, so first and foremost, I want to point out that this is not just the words of Lemuel's mother. But it is said to be the prophecy that his mother taught him. You know, prophecies you can speak to the words of the Most High, amen? Yeah. You know, so, um, and it's not hard to believe that because there's some very wise words in here, you know. Uh, first of all, she's speaking to her son Lemuel, King Lemuel. Lemuel, his name means belonging to or for Elohim. Hallelujah. So that is definitely the king you want to follow, the one that is belonging to or for Elohim. All right? Now, she says, For him not to give thy strength unto women, nor take thy ways to that which destroy of kings. And then she elaborates on it a bit, you know, as to um, that which destroy of kings. And she tells us in verse 4, she says, It is not for the kings to drink wine, nor for the princes strong drink. You know, and you can see the wisdom in this, um, you know, very easily today, as I'm pretty sure you probably could back then with the uh, drunks and, and winos on the corners. You know, you know, uh, the last thing you would expect to see someone in that condition would be the king. Amen. You know. That, for that surely would destroy him. Okay, verse 5 says, Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any other afflicted. You know, so yes, you know, you definitely you don't want to be drinking and forget the, um, the laws that you're supposed to be upholding and start perverting the judgment, you know, that would also destroy the king, no, no doubt about it. But she does tell us how to use strong drink and wine. She says, Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Hey, you know, that's what the strong drink is for. It's for those who are on their way out, for those that, you know, about to kill over. You know, hey, have them drink up. You know, uh, help them, help numb some of their pain and, and misery, you know. And it says, uh, and give the wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. You know, because uh, it, said, it is said that wine makes the heart merry. You know, so uh, she says to, for him to give wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. You know, uh, and that word misery can also be translated as worry. Now, it says open the mouth of the dumb 
and the cause of all such things are appointed to destruction. Absolutely, you have to stand in, especially as a king, you have to stand in. And, and for us as individuals, it's good for us to stand in for those who, and speak up for those who can't speak up for themselves. You know, it says, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. You know, some very, some very good, very wise, very righteous uh, instructions here. Now, of course, Proverbs 31 speaks to the Proverbs 31 woman. You know, the proverb, uh, the example of the ultimate wife in Scripture. I mean, you know, so let's take a look. Proverbs 31 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Okay, this word virtuous is kaiel. Number 24, 28, it speaks to strength. It also can speak to virtue. So it's speaking to one that is strong in virtue. Hallelujah. You know, and so I took the liberty of putting up some passages up here that speaks to women who are strong in virtue. Colossians 3, 18 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Adonai. Proverbs 11, 16, A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. You know, so strong men are going to store, store away wealth and riches, and gracious women are going to store away honor. You know, 1 Timothy 3, 11, even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. I don't know um, any man who wants a drunk wife. You know, definitely want her to be sober in every aspect of the word. You know, even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. You know, so these are some attributes of, some, of uh, being a virtuous woman. Proverbs 31.11 The heart of her husband do of safely trust in her. There's no doubts in his mind. You know, he doesn't, he's not wondering, his, his, his mind isn't strained. He's not, you know, uh, worried about if she's going to do right. You know, he has 100% trust in her. So that he shall have no need of spoil. The how did the husband do of safely trust in her so that he have no need of spoil? You know, now, uh, actually what this speaks to is, is him going to war, the man going to war. You know, and it was oftentimes done, you know, that they would sign up for war um, so that they can obtain some of the spoil. You know, so if they, if they weren't making it, you know, um, in a sense of uh, if whatever they were doing for employment wasn't quite cutting the, cutting the mustard, so to speak, you know, they would sign up, sign up uh, for war. And when they went to war, their pay was the, oftentimes the prey or the booty from, from the war. If they, if they won the battle, then they spoiled the enemies and they took their uh, whatever wealth they found for themselves. You know, and so this is a way that, that, uh, that many uh, men took care of their families. You know, they would actually, you know, um, sign up for war when, when, uh, when they were going to war and, and hey, Come back with some, some plunder, some booty, um, preferably not in a body bag, you know. But this is uh, this is how they used to do. But the heart of the husband who safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil, you know. So the one with a virtuous woman, with a virtuous wife, you know, he has no need to go and do those things because she has his back. She's his help me. You know, she's there helping him, and he doesn't have to go out and make extra, you know, in that sense, you know, or in that way. You know, Proverbs 31, 12 says, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You know, so what does this doing good look like? Proverbs 18, 22 says, whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain a favor of Yahoo. Hallelujah. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a good thing to find a good wife. You know, uh, Proverbs 12, 4 
also bears witness that says a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. You know, but what happens if you find not a good one, but a bad one? You know, one that's, that is, does bring evil, you know, into the household. Well, Proverbs 12, 4 speaks to that as well. It says, but she that maketh a shame is as rottenness in his bones. You know, um, to put that in perspective, that would be like cancer of the bones today. You know, every wise man, Proverbs 14, 1, every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hand. You know, and see, and this is one, this is the thing, you know, so if, if you have a good one, you know, if a woman is a good, she's a good wife, and if she's this virtuous woman, she's this Proverbs 31 woman, you know, then, you know, her husband doesn't even worry about, you know, uh, worry about anything because he knows that she has his back all the way, you know, um, in every aspect, you know, uh, financially, you know, included. You know, so that he doesn't need, he doesn't have to leave the house. He doesn't have to leave home and, and go to war and risk his life. You know, he can stay and, and, and do his work and whatever, uh, whatever extra they need. He knows that his wife is bringing something to the table. You know, now, Proverbs 14, now that's, that's if they're working with him. But if they're working against him, then that'd be, that would be like the foolish that pluck a bit down with her hands. You know, so, you know, here it is, you have one building it up and the other one's um, tearing it down. You know, and I've, I've seen that in many a marriage, you know, where one party is steady trying to build, you know, build a household and the other party is steady plundering it. You know, and of course they don't get nowhere fast, you know, because it's not going to work like that, you know. But the first part said a wise woman builds her, her home. You know, she builds, she builds her family, she, she builds work, marriage, home, faith, relationships, love, community. She's a builder, she builds that house. And one of the ways that she does it is through entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know, as we're gonna see with this Proverbs 31 woman, you know, um, something that you don't oftentimes hear heard about her is that she was an entrepreneur, yeah. you know? She wasn't just sitting back at home twiddling her thumbs and chasing the kids around, you know. Proverbs 31, 13 through 15, my next reader, please. She seeketh wool and flex and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and Give it meat to her household, her household, and a portion to her maidens. Hallelujah! So we see that she seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. Nobody, nobody has a um, has a gun to her head. No one's threatening her. She does it willingly. She seeks about the wool and the flax, and she go to work. She is like merchant ships. She bring her food from afar, you know. Um, and what it's speaking to is that she's actually working through the day, but she still doesn't neglect the family by cooking the night before. <laughs> you know, so hence we see in verse 15, it says, she rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household. You know, she bringeth her food from afar. She makes it in advance, you know, way ahead of time so that it doesn't interrupt her being able to work. You know, so she rises up also, rises also while it is yet night and give meat to her household and a portion to her handmaids. So, even, <laughs> even though she's uh, an entrepreneur, she go out and get the, uh, um, the proverbial, what well, we're not going to call uh, the, the, the turkey bacon, bring it home, fry it up in the pan, and she's still, still able to hold down, hold down the force. She's still able to bring in income. She's still able to meet her duties, you know, and, and um, do everything that, that, she's, that she's supposed to do or that she's, uh, 
you know, um, do her part in the marriage. Let's just put it that way, you know. So she holds it down, you know. Proverbs thirty-one sixteen through twenty-one. My next reader, please. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands. She planted a vineyard. She girds her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. She candles goes not out by night. She lends her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold a distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yeah. She reaches forth her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household are clothed in scarlet. Hallelujah. Okay, so it tells us in verse 16, it says, She considereth a field and buy it with the fruit of her hands. She planted a vineyard. You know, so she considereth a field. She goes out and she's looking. She buys the field with the fruit of her hands. She planted a vineyard so that her and her family can have the best of food. Amen. She got her fault. I got up her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceived that her merchandise is good. She's going to work. She's putting, she's putting it to work. She's, so from verse 16, we see that she's not, she's not one that just squanders um, the finances. You know, because you can consider a field, but in order to buy it, you're going to have to save something. So she's not spending everything that come in. You know, she finds a way to save some of it until she builds up enough to buy herself a field. And that's really important to, to consider. You know, because especially in today's time where people spending every dime even before it come in, you know, they spending it even before it come in. How? Because they're they're getting themselves into debt. Exactly. Credit cards and, and, and putting themselves into debt so they owe out even before the money come in. You know, this, uh, this time of instant gratification. You know, it used to be that those who were prudent, and it still is those who are prudent, you know, they don't spend what they don't have. She considered fulfilled and she buy it. You know, she saves up, she gets it because she understands that the borrower is enslaved to the lender. You know, it says, with the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. Her arms speaking to her works. She perceived that her merchandise is good. So she perfects her craft until she see that it is good enough to sell. She, it says, her candle go off not out by night. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, man, when does she have time to sleep? She cooking at night. Her candle don't go out. She working through the day. She working through the night. She taking care of the kids. You know, verse 19 says she lay up her hands to the spindle and her hands hold to this staff. You know, she's, she's a very busy person. You know, but this is how it starts. That doesn't mean that's the way it finishes. You know, and just like I'd like to tell the youth, if you're going to get anything out of life, it's going to take a sacrifice. You know, and whether you make that sacrifice early or you make it late, it's going to take a sacrifice. You know, and that's what I see in this. I see her making a sacrifice. You know, and eventually, you know, y'all willing, it gets to the point to where she's not working as hard because she done laid a foundation, she done built the house, and she done established something, and it begins to run much easier. You know, but... This is definitely what it looks like in the beginning stage with anyone. You know, you have to maintain everything you need to do, and then you have to do some extra because you're trying to get ahead. You're not going to get ahead by not doing extra. If you just do just what just the bare necessity, then you'll never get ahead. You know, so this is what she's doing. You know, and she doesn't forget about the poor. Verse 20 says she stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. So, you know, she's still, she's still giving all. She still have compassion. She's still, she's not, she's, she doesn't have a, um, a love of money. You know, she's, she's trying to better her, her life for herself and her family, but she still have compassion. She still um, gives out her hand to the poor and needy. Says she is not afraid of snow for her household, for all of her household are clothed with scarlet. Now, that's, I'm not too happy about that translation, clothed with scarlet. When you look at the Hebrew, it's Shanaim, you know, and 
uh, they say that uh, 8144 speaking to Scarlet, you know, but it's actually a plural term. The singular speaks to Scarlet on the most part. It's from Shana, meaning to devil, to repeat. So more so uh, is speaking to all our household has uh, at least two changes of, um, of clothing, you know, so they can devil up. That's why she's not afraid of the snow. She's not afraid of the cold because all her household have double um, changes of uh, garments. They can double their garments up and so that they'll be nice and warm, you know. So, and it's, um, it's even translated that way in, in many of the uh, um, alternate translations from the KJV. All right, Proverbs 31, 22 through 25, my next reader, please. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Hallelujah. All right, so verse 22 says she make of herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Um, also, not the greatest translation. This word silk is sheish in the Hebrew, number 83, 36, and it speaks to linen. So her clothing is linen and purple. Linen, of course, representing righteousness. She's, so it's a picture of her being clothed with righteousness and with purple royalty. You know, she is as a queen. You know, if, if, if only to her household, she is a queen. Amen. You know, so she's clothed with uh, linen, with righteousness, and with royalty. All right. You know, verse 23 says, Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. The reason that he's known is, is, um, is in large part because of his virtuous wife who has acquired a good reputation. Yeah. You know, so it's not just his reputation, it's her reputation, uh, his and her reputation together that have made them known throughout the land. And so even the elders have heard of him. And so they uh, likely commend him when he comes and sit in the gates. You know, and now verse 24 is interesting. It says, she make a fine linen and sell of it and deliver of girdles unto the merchant <coughs> says strength and honor are, are her clothing and she shall rejoice in the time to come you know now take note that um when we go up to verse 22 it says her clothing is silk or linen her clothing is linen you know and purple you know but here she make a fine linen and sell of it you know she's not wearing the fine linen she's just wearing the linen she make the fine linen though but she sell it you know, and she delivered with girders onto the merchant. So not only is she in the, uh, out there in the, in the marketplace selling her own goods, she done put some out on consignment, you know, and have another um, stand sell it as well. She's enterprising, you know. She's, uh, she's getting her things out there, you know. And it says strength and honor are her clothing, so she makes sure she covers herself with honor and with strength. And she shall rejoice in the time to come. And see, and that's what I was talking about. She's making a sacrifice right now. But in the time to come, she's going to rejoice. She's going to be able to sit back, her and her family, and they're going to have um, everything that they, all their needs are going to be met, and they're going to have a wonderful life, Yah willing. You know, so uh, 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10 um, teaches uh, something similar. It says, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Not shamefacedness and uh, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which become of women professing godliness with good works. You know, now some of the things that's being mentioned here was noted for the prostitutes of that day and time. You know, they used to uh, wear the broided hair, um, the gold and the pearls and the costly array. You know, that was something, you know, that was significant or uh, that signified, you know, that they were working women, so to speak. You know, but here being warned, say, wear that which become of women professing godliness, you know. So whatever the godly women look like, uh, whatever they're wearing, that's, you know, that's what you want to wear 
you know, and also adorn yourself with good works. All right, my next reader, uh, Proverbs 31, 26 through 31. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also who praises her. Many daughters have, gone, have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth Yahuwah, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. Hallelujah. Yes, verse 26 says she's opened, she opened up her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. You know, now that's kind of contrary to this next couple passages, you know, which is kind of a sign and, and, um, and a signal or that scripture is given as to how not to be. It says in Proverbs 21, 9, it's better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a white house. You know, doesn't nothing make for ruining the atmosphere of the household than an argument, you know. Proverbs 21, 19 also says it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. You know, so uh, us men will try not to make women angry and contentious, and women try not to be brawling women in a, in a wide house so that we can keep the sanctity of the household and everyone can get some sleep at night and have shalom. <laughs> you know, uh, verse 27 says, She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Yes, in most cases, if the women would adhere to this one, the husbands would be okay. <laughs> and then there's some that won't be. So, <laughs> but. Says her children to rise up and call her, bless her husband also, and he praises her. You know, and I can definitely see that happening. Many daughters have done virtuously. This is not the only type of virtuous woman, but this is the one that excels them all. This is the best of the best. This is the, uh, the uh, most you can get. You know, this type of virtuous woman excels them all. Says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fear of Yahuwah, she shall be praised. Hallelujah. And that's what I try to tell the youth now today. Don't go looking for somebody to love you. Look for someone who loves Yah. Yeah. Truly loves Yah. You know, with all their heart, mind, and soul. Because if they love Yah with all their heart, mind, and soul, they're going to love you by default. Because Yah is going to tell them, hey, we love you. <laughs> you know, so it says, Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You know, and that's the thing about that's the thing about uh, a virtuous woman. This this Proverbs thirty one woman, her own works praise her in the gates. Why? Because she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. You know, she keep herself busy. She keep doing what she's supposed to do, and her just her acts and her being her makes a name for herself. You know, and that's the way it ought to be. You know, so that's all I have for today. Pray it was a blessing. Hallelujah.